Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Even as I share your word, use me as your vessel. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is Lynn Wanja, daughter of Teacher Esther and Peter Mbogwa. Kindly stand up. Let's acknowledge them. So, oh, before I start, I have a small activity. When I say sit up, you say revive us, O Lord, and stand. Sit up. Sit up. You can sit. Uh, As so our church school theme this year, coming which is Revive Us, O Lord, coming from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter, 9, verse 10, verse 9, chapter 10, verse 9 to 15, and Second Acts, chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. I have a small story here. Ben's mother repeatedly told her sons that they could do anything anybody else could do and do it better if they would only work hard at it, she always had faith in them and never accepted excuses. Just like Ben's mother, our parents do not get tired of repeatedly and encouraging us, your children, not to give, not to give up, but have faith in God. In our Bible study today, we are going to learn how to let the servant, that is God, go ahead and connect with our destiny, being revived. Revive, coming from the word revival. What is to be revived? To get restored, to get new energy. So, in First Samuel, you've seen the story of Saul and how he came to become a king. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to take you to the background of the story and show you how Saul came to become a king. So, so you know the story of Hannah and uh, Elkanah. They had a son. Hannah had been, had been wanting a son. She would go to the temple and pray, asking God for a child. And she promised God that if God will give her a child, she will dedicate her, him or her to the temple. And God gave him a son, which he was named Samuel. So Samuel grew up and had children. But his children were disobedient, were perverted. They were doing all those nasty stuff. But Matthew, also Eli's sons, were the same. But Eli's sons were much worse. They will do dirty things that the temples get. So these things annoyed the people. And this is where the people wanted a king. They did not want the sons of Samuel to lead them because they went astray with the word of God. And that is where the people told Samuel that they wanted a king. And that is how we come to meet Saul. So the father of Saul, Kish, had lost his donkeys. So he sent Saul and a servant to go look for the donkeys. They looked for the donkeys for three days, three nights, but they could not find the donkeys. So the servant told Saul they go to Samuel, who was known as a seer, to help them locate the donkeys. They went to Samuel, and Samuel told them that the donkeys have found their way back home. And that night, they shared a meal together. And the next day, Samuel told Saul to send the 
servant to go ahead. So, Samuel was left with Saul. And that is where Samuel took a flask of oil and anointed Saul. And that's how Saul came to become a king. And Saul was told that on his way back home, he will find prophets prophesying and singing with tambourines. And that is what happened. When Saul was going back home, he found the prophets. And the prophets told him that he will start prophesying. The people who knew Saul could not believe it. He was a changed man. He had been revived. He had gotten new strength, new energy. But this could not have happened if Saul was not obedient. In order for you to, re to be revived, you must be obedient and change your past, your past ways. And also Saul was not alone. Saul walked with his servant. And uh, in the way I understood this, walking alone is, walk is walking, not walking alone is walking by the word of God. You walk with the word of God and let it lead you in your daily activities. Saul also carried food. But it is not the food we eat, it is the spiritual food. The word of God. You carry the word of God in your heart and put it into practice. Saul worked in unity. Saul worked with, in unity with the servant to look for Samuel. And, just, and us, we should be united even as a church in different ministries because there is unity. Because where there is unity, God commands a blessing. Sit up. And also for this to happen, Saul was strong and healthy. So you should be, to be a doer of the word of God. You do as it says. And trust in the Lord. That is being strong with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Uh, and uh, when you come to the book of Acts, we see the disciples praying and worshipping in a room, waiting for the Holy Spirit. People thought that they were drunk. But it was the Holy Spirit in them. But also this could not have happened if the disciples were not obedient. Obedience is a really, really... See, obedience is better than sacrifice. The disciples had walked with Jesus for three years before he, before he, he rose and ascended into heaven. So they knew that, they knew the ways Jesus used. They knew that, they knew the way Jesus, they walked with Jesus for those three years and they had and they knew how Jesus was doing his work. So Jesus was sure when he left them the Holy Spirit, it will lead them. So every solution is found in the word of God. And it makes you, and it makes you get restored when you have been broken down and you have stress. The solution is found in the word of God as we've had the meaning of revival, which means to be restored, to get new energy. You should read your Bible every day. It makes you know about, more about God and get you restored every day. So read your Bible every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day. If you want to grow, want to grow. If you want to Read your Bible, 
pray every day if you want to grow. Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. Don't pray every day. Don't pray every day. Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. And you shrink, shrink, shrink. So if you don't know the word of God, you won't be restored. And we also see that Saul did not refuse to go with his servant. And when Saul did not refuse, if Saul could have refused to go with this, his servant, he could not have been anointed the king. Si angejiona aseme ai misi ezienda na wewe uko mbona tuende kuona huyo mtu si ndio and if he could have refused he could not, he could not have gotten that anointing uh, in obedience as i said earlier we can learn to be obedient to the word of god can we be available to, to be used by God just like Saul was used by God? Like me, when I was told to preach, I saw this thing, I apana Because I have faith that you can do it. And I'm um, here now. So, it is always good to fellowship together in our church and home fellowships. And when you fellowship with others, you can be restored and revived through encouragement from your fellows. But when you... And, and most people who have stress are depressed. Ni wale watu anajitenga na watu. So you can easily be depressed when you stay alone. But you need to fellowship with others to get that word of encouragement to make you move forward. We also see fellowship with the disciples. They stayed together in a room. That is fellowship. And were filled with the Holy Spirit together. So the results of being obedient, you get revived, you get, new, you get restored, you get new energy. The results of fellowship makes us revived and restored, just like the disciples when they received the Holy Spirit. Sit up. Your background should not hinder you from achieving your goals. Even poverty, even if your parents are not able to provide, poverty should not hinder you from achieving your goals. And work hard to have a better life. Watoto, mufanye kazi kwa bidi, musome kwa bidi, iyo maisha inye mam na dad wanaishi, Tamani kuishi maisha mazuri kualiko. Yeah. <laughs> Academic failures. Even if you don't perform well, you should not, it should not hinder you from achieving your goals. Si kuna watu successful na wajasoma, but si jasema msisome. Physical challenges should not also hinder you from achieving your goals. Past failures. Yeliopita sin dwele tugange. 
negative spoken words. This is for the teachers, parents, guardians. Kindly, kindly use positive words. As you know, that words have power. You see me, this uh, negative spoken word, I didn't let it disturb or hinder me from achieving my dreams. Like back in primary, when we were choosing schools, like, vile unenda kwa mwalimu wa kupatie advice, ticha mincha gwe shule gani, kambia ticha, ticha, you know what, I want to go to Alliance. I want to go to Alliance. I teach you guys. Alliance. Uko ufiki, uko utaka nyaga, uto onadi na macho yako. Sasa, napigia mam, nambia mam. Tu teacha, teacha kwanza kanyulizu, umechagua shule gani? Mka ambia mam, misi juwi. Si, tuko tumesima tunachagua Alliance. Lakini, mam, minasikia kuitoe juu, kuna teacha miniambia, siyezi fika uko. Haka nyambia, haraka endo urudishe yo shule, because I know that's the school you are going to go. And after KCP, after the results were announced, I was called to Alliance Girls. And this same teacher was, this, was the first to call us. Ah, Mama Lin. Eh, mtutuetu wa mepita. Eh, sinu ili kuambia? Eh? See, you see, people will not believe it. This, when the Spirit of God has been poured among on flesh, can you tell your neighbor, God has good plans for you? Mwambia tena, God has good plans for you. Be ready to be used by God. Be ready to be used by God. Have faith in God. Be born again. Sit up. But for all this to have all these things to happen, you need to trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. You to trust and obey. You need to trust and obey. Parents obey our children. Obey your parents. For this is the right thing to do. Keep off barriers. Hizi barriers ni kama gani? Hizo zenye tumesema po nyuma. Negative spoken word. Any negative spoken word against you, you say, it shall not happen. And children, you should have a mentor. Si kuna kale kam tu nadmaya, ivi unamu admaya. You follow the footsteps of that person until you make it and be better than them. Just like God should be your mentor by reading the word of God, by listening to teachings in church, by obeying your parents. I want us to say this memory verse together. Psalms 85, chapter 85 verse 6. Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. So metena. Will you not revive us again, that your people will rejoice in you? With the anointing that you have received, I want a teacher to pass a microphone to anybody. 
and tell us one thing they will accomplish in life before they expire. That is before you die. Anybody, any person. Just one thing that you'll accomplish in your life before you expire. <laughs> Boro, are you serious? Anyway, to serve God until that day when he comes and I rest. Mwingine? To keep on worshiping God until mm -hmm. he comes again. Wow. Another person? It's you who is so To serve God to the fullest of my age. To serve God? And Najua uh, nyote pia mkona answers, lakini atwezi wapia nyote microphone. Okay. Sit up. Sit up. Now take one minute and meditate on what you have learned today. So we should all purpose to be like Saul. Just like how Saul was obedient, Saul did not walk alone. Saul was strong and healthy with the word of God. Just like the disciples, they worked in fellowship. And as we have read that, work, working in fellowship gets you encouraged, gets you, gets you stay away from uh, depression, stress. Amen? And as I finish up, I pray that all of us, may we be revived. Amen. 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 Thank you.